Hey guys, it's Courtney. Today I am creating a few different cards with the Bunch of Bouquets die cut set from Honeybee Stamps. I'll also be using the Thankful dies as well as the Grateful Stamp set and the Angular Banner dies. So I started by die cutting all of my images from the a Bunch of Bouquets and I'm just using my Tombow Mono Multi Glue to just spread a little bit of that glue out. This is repositionable once it's dry so this way my images won't shift around when I'm coloring them and I'm just adhering those temporarily once that glue is dry to a scrap piece of cardstock just to make my coloring a little bit easier. Now I colored a lot more images than I actually ended up using but I'll use them for another project at another time. For this first little planter or vase um, this is actually a watering can, I guess, um, but I'm just using my C markers here and going in with my darkest color first, just because I find that the cool gray markers do blend pretty well. Starting with my C7 and just going on the outer edges of that image, then I'll go on with my C5 and blend that out a little bit, then to my C3, and then finally my C1 just for the center. I'm not used to using such a big piece of paper when I'm recording so a lot of the caps you can't see as far as what colors I'm using but I'll try my best to let you know what colors they are. Now this is a rounder object. All of the images with the exception of the flowers and leaves are round objects. So for the most part we're keeping the highlight right in the center to give the illusion that this object is round. For my next little planter here, this has the edge on top. So I'm starting with my lightest color and I'm just drawing a line there because there would be a shadow where that kind of hangs over the bottom part. And that is my E30. Next I'll go in with my E37 and go right directly over that line and start my flicking from either side. Now this isn't necessarily a round object, but I did still want my my center to be the highlight. And I'm using various sizes of flicks here. I'll go in with my E33 and extend that out as well as that line underneath the top. Then to my E31, doing the same exact thing, extending it almost to the center, and then back in with my E30 to fill in just that center. For this next one, it's pretty much shaped the same way, except for this would be round. So I'm going in with my E70, just mapping out with my darkest areas, then going in with my E79, again using various flicks. This is a pretty large difference in color here, so my highlight will be even more noticeable on this one, but that's okay because this one is round. Next is my E74, just extending those flicks out, leaving a generous highlight in the center, making sure I go over that line that is my shadow from the top part, and then back in with my E70 and flicking that out just a little bit. Like I said, this is a big difference in color, so you don't want to move that darker color around. Now for this one, you don't necessarily need to do the flicks. I know that some people, especially when you're just starting off with alcohol markers, the flicking can be a little difficult to master. So here I went over the entire thing with my E55. My edges, I'm just doing a few little lines of my E59, blending that out with my E57 and then going back in with my E55 just there in the very center. For the next vase here, I'm not using any flicking on this either. I'm gonna go in with my entire, basically the entire thing with my Y23, except I'm leaving that little highlight there off to the right. Then I'll go in with my Y28 and go just on either side, making sure that I preserve that white little spot that I left for my highlight. Now my Y25 and then back in with my Y23. Now if you accidentally go over that white area that you're leaving for your 
highlight or your reflection, you can always go back in with a gel pen and fix that up. Now for these flowers, I am coloring these ones here. I guess they're maybe tulips or something shaped like that. I'm going in with my RV11 and just mapping out my darkest areas, then my RV69, extending that out with my RV17, then my RV14. Now I did try to blend my RV14 and RV11 and it was just a little bit too much of a difference. RVs can be a little tough sometimes. So I ended up using the RV13 as my highlight rather than the RV11. For the next set of flowers, I'll be going in with my V markers. And these are gonna look kind of crazy in the beginning. But I'm gonna take my lightest color here and just make a small little triangle or a little flick just where these petals meet. And then I'll go in with my darkest color, which is my V09, and basically just go over that area where I had put in my lightest color. Then I'll extend that out, make that triangle just a little bit bigger and a little bit longer with my V06. Then the same thing with my V04 and then covering up the entire flower with my V01. We're gonna add Nouveau drops in the center of these so it's not going to look like this forever. For the next set, I just took any marker, it doesn't matter what color marker you use. Again, these are this part is going to be covered up. I'm just drawing a little circle, and this is just going to be used as my guide where to put my flicks. I'm starting with my darkest color and just adding just a few, maybe one or two flicks for each area where those petals are. Then extending that out with my YR04, and then covering up the entire area with my Y35. Now for this, when you go in with your YR07 here, which is the darkest color, you just have to pay attention to where those petals are so that e each flick is lined up with the center of the edge of the petal. And then once you go in with your mid-tone, you're kind of going to spread that out. But as long as that longest flick is lined up, you'll be fine. For my leaves and my stems, I'll be using two different varieties of G markers and YG markers. For this first one here, I'm just going to map out with my lightest color, which is a YG93. And then I'll go in with my YG97. And I'm just going to concentrate my darkest areas being right there in the center and kind of flicking out a little bit. With just the tip of the marker, I'm barely touching the paper here. Then extend those out with my YG95, then covering up the entire area with my YG93. This one, I'm gonna do the same thing, only I'm gonna go right in with my darkest color. I don't, the first one over blended a little bit, so I'm gonna try to avoid that by going in with my darkest color first and then working my way down. For the other leaves in the set, as well as these little stems, I'm going to go in with my uh, G21. And I want to make these leaves look like they're kind of bowed out. So my highlight will be in the center. Then going in with my G28, then the G46, and then back to my G21. Now these leaves that are kind of touching here, you want to make sure that you're creating your own shadow. So I'm just going to draw a line there with my darkest color to just make sure that those leaves are separated and then coloring those the same way. Now I'm not going to show you the process of making these cards but I will show you the finished projects. I've kept them pretty clean and simple. 
For my first card, I masked out the center of the card and just used antique linen and vintage photo distress ink and created kind of like a table for this little planter to be sitting on. I popped that up with foam tape along with the flowers. I added the thankful die and one of the angular banners for the rest of the sentiment. I added Nouveau drops right in the center of the flowers in the color sugared almond. For the second card, I used shaded lilac, regular distress ink, just there in the uh, bottom right hand corner and faded my way up. I masked out the left hand side and just, just used the dist distress ink, sorry, uh, for that side. Use that thankful die and the angular banners for the sentiment. And I also put Nouveau drops in the color crushed grape in the center. For this last one, I used the hexagon stencil and wild honey and fossilized amber distress oxide inks off to the right hand side, popped up my vase as well as my flowers and added the sentiment from the grateful stamp set and used the angular dies for that as well. Thanks again for stopping by and have a great day guys.